Folks, let's talk about simple and highly effective Power Query ideas that are going to help you not break your queries. No further ado, let's do this together. I'm sure you already know that, that Power Query is case sensitive. So how do you make Power Query case insensitive. Whenever you're trying to apply filters or search for a value, if you do not provide the value in the same case as it is there in the data, you're not going to get appropriate results. Take a look. So let's just say that I have this customer column and I'm trying to apply a filter on, let's say, a good fly customer. So customer name, text filters, and I'm trying to search, let's say, which customer contains the word good fly. Not goodly, but good fly. Now, as soon as I press on OK, you can see that the table returns a blank. But if I just go to the previous step right here, I am going to see that there is a good fly customer, but I haven't been able to get to that result. Why is that? Because the good fly that I typed in the formula bar has the fly as F uppercase and not a lowercase. So how do I make this as case insensitive? In a lot of functions in Power Query, you're going to get this optional input parameter where you can declare case insensitivity. And one such function is text.contain. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say, hey, text.contains, go in the customer column, which is this column, and please search for the word good fly. It's going to, by default, maintain the case sensitivity. But here is where I can just put a comma and as the last input I can say please um, have the case ignored the IntelliSense is not working so uh, I just I'm not sure let's just see if that works okay it worked and this is one such way where you can ignore case sensitivity of the searches and the filters that you're trying to apply in Power Query I've done another video on ignoring case sensitivity in case you'd like to take a look at a more detailed description of this I would highly recommend that you please take a look at that video as well Let's move on to idea number two. Hack number two, expanding columns without hard coding the names of the columns. Now take a look at this uh, query that I'm trying to work with. I have a source step, I have inserted a year and grouped the rows. And you're going to land into a query several times where you have a column and the column has several tables and you have this magical expand button where you can expand all the columns of all the tables. Let's just do that for a bit. So if I just maybe click on the expand button right here, uncheck the name prefix, and maybe click on OK, you're going to see that all the tables get expanded and the data gets combined. Now, the problem is that if you take a look at the names of the columns, they are hard coded right here. And any change in the data might just break the query because the names of your columns are hard coded. And I want these column names to be dynamic. How do I do that? So let me just kind of go back to the group row step and start to create a function or a method where all the names are captured rather than being hard coded in the formula. Let's just try to do that. I'm going to create a new step right here. Click on insert. I'm creating a step in between the group rows and the expanded that I just created, which is at the moment custom one. Now I'm going to say that, hey, here are the four tables that I have. I would like to combine the data of these tables, but I only want to get the headers of the tables which are combined. How do I write all of that? So I'm going to say that the group rows is nothing but the previous step, which is right here. And from this step, I'm just trying to fetch the column called all. So I'm just going to say all in the square brackets and press enter. This is going to give me a list of the tables. I'm going to wrap this around in the table.combine function. And I'm going to close the brackets and close the brackets towards the end as well. Now this literally combines the tables. I don't really want to combine the tables. I want to fetch the names of the columns. So I can say that, hey, after you've combined the tables, however, I'm not interested in the combined data. I am interested in table.column names of the tables which have been combined. Close the bracket and press enter. And what you're going to get is nothing but the list of the columns which are there in all the four tables. Now I can rename this as column list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and feed this particular list in my expanded all function. So what I can say is that, hey, table dot expand table column, which table are you trying to expand? So I'm not trying to expand the column list table. I am trying to expand the group rows table. That's the table which I want to expand. So I'm going to say, hey, uh, this is going to be grouped rows. In group rows, the columns that I'm trying to expand is the all column, which contained the four tables. And the list of the columns that I want to expand is not the hard coded list, but the list that I have created, which is nothing but column list. Close the bracket and press enter. And what you're going to get is an error. Now, the problem is that if I just go back to the group row step right here, I already have an year column here and there cannot be another name of the same column 
from the table that you're expanding. So there is also an year column right here in this table and this year column and this year column cannot be the same. So what I can do is I can just do a simple renaming, call this as year one or something and that should actually do the trick. So I've just renamed the column just to make the query work for a bit. So this is good to go. Column list is the names of the columns. And now if I expand it, you can see that the tables gets expanded and I have no problems and the column names are not hard coded, which was the most important idea that I wanted to communicate. Another most common problem that happens in queries is that the query breaks because of the change type errors. What do I mean by that? Take a look. So here as the last step of the query, I have a change type step. And if I just go back to the source step, let me just delete one of the columns. So let me just say that, hey, customer column is deleted, but in the next step, I have applied a change type to the customer, declaring that customer as a type of text. Now, obviously the query is not going to run because it does not find the customer and the query breaks here. What can you do about it? Ideally, there should be a, like a variable in this formula that ignores the columns that haven't been found, but there it isn't. So what you can do is you can use a custom function that I made. In case you would like to take a look at the logic of the custom function that I have made, this was quite a few videos ago. I will suggest a video that you should watch. And that is where I explain the broad logic of creating a function like that. But for now, just eat the mango and you're going to enjoy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right here and I'm going to make a custom function and I've already copied the code for that. I'm just going to stick that code inside Power Query. So right click, new query, other sources and a blank query. I'm just going to go to the view tab, advanced editor, get rid of everything. And that is where I paste the functions. Once I have pasted the function, I can click on done. This becomes like a function. Obviously I can give it a better name, call this as change type, no errors. Now all that I would want to do is instead of the regular function that is used by Power Query, you can just use the function that I have created, which is change type, no errors. All that you would want to do is that in the existing function, which is returning you the error, please remove the function that Power Query has used, which is table.transform column types, and use the function that I have used, which is change type, no errors. Once you do that, press on OK, and it does not give any sort of errors, even if the column is not found. Now take a look once again. So let's just go ahead and remove two columns from here. So I'm also going to get rid of the date column, which in the next step, by the way, I have changed the data type to a date. You can see that it is a data type as a date time format. But if that column was not found, nothing breaks and the query just works fine. Now there is a bit of caveat to that, which is in case you are trying to apply this into your query and your query functions just well, eventually it might break the DAX or the pivot table or anything which is connected to this particular query because the query ran just fine, but the column was not found eventually. So bearing in mind of that caveat, you can still use that function and make sure that your query doesn't break. Another very common type of errors that I see in Power Query is that you have applied some sort of transformation on the column, but the column was missing in the data and hence it breaks the queries. Take a look. So here on the sales rep, I have applied a transformation that make every single sales rep as a lower case. And that's what the function says. And in the previous step, if I just go ahead and delete this particular column, go ahead and delete it. Now, when the transformation is trying to look for that sales rep column, it doesn't find that and the query breaks again. What can you do about it? If you don't really want the query to break, what you can do is use the optional input parameter of this function table.transform columns and make sure that the query functions just well. What can you do about it? Come right here towards the end of the function it's, and just write a null to make sure that if the column is not found, nothing really happens. So you declare the value as null. And you also say that if you have a missing field, you can just say missing field dot ignore. And if my spelling is right, this is going to make sure that the query functions well and it doesn't break the query, even if the column that you were trying to apply the transformations to is not really found. Now, I would like to leave you with two very interesting videos. One video is on that function, which is table.transform columns. There are a lot of additional capabilities of that function. And in case you would like to learn that, please go watch that video. Another video is on missing field.ignore. At the moment, I'm talking about missing field.ignore in the context of only one function, but there are several other places where missing field.ignore works beautifully, and you should definitely take a look at that other video as well. Okay, people, quick interruption in the video. I hope you're enjoying the video. In case you would like to level up your skills, learn the fundamentals of Power Query, DAX, and data modeling really well, and then even move on to solving harder, more challenging problems of your own data, understand the logic of solving the problems, and then attack the problems in a logical way, 
please do not hesitate to check out my courses. Those are going to be super helpful in building your skills up. Let's just get back to the hacks. The last one is capturing errors, which is super interesting. Now, even after the work that we have done trying to mitigate the errors from the query, there are still going to be some genuine errors in the queries which are going to be leftovers and you cannot do anything about it. The only way to resolve those errors is to go back to the data and get rid of the errors at the source level. So take a look at this query that I'm trying to work with. I have the date column, sales rep, sales, profit, and the region column, and there are some genuine errors in the data. So what I have done is I have added a column called custom, which is where I'm trying to calculate my profitability. Technically, I should call this column as my profit percentage, and that's good to go. So I'm trying to calculate profit percentage, which is where I have taken the value of sales, divided that by profit to get a percentage value. And you can see that wherever the sales was an invalid text value. So here the sales was nothing and it was just a dash and a dash cannot be divided by a number and hence it gives you an error. There are some other places where the sales value was an error itself. There was an any error in the sales cell right here. And obviously anything that is utilizing the error to carry out the calculations is also going to give you an error. So no matter what I do, unless I delete the errors out of the data, I would not be able to fix the errors. The only way is to go back to the source. It's very essential for me in this scenario to capture the errors and give it out to the person who's responsible for the data. But how do I do that? Let's just take a look. So here what I have done is I have right clicked on this particular query and I said that I want to reference this query. Once I reference the query, this is the query that I have created, which is query with errors. Let's just take a look at the first step of the query, which is the last step of the query where I have referenced it from. Now, what I do after that is that I create an index column. I'm sure you know how to do that. So I can go over to the add columns tab, index column and create a column from one. And that's the column that I get. Once I create the index column, the next thing that I do is I select the index column and I unpivot all the other columns, which brings the data in this particular format. So I have the index column right here. I have the attribute. The attribute is technically the name of the column. I should have renamed that, but for now it's okay. So attribute is the name of the column and value is the value of that column. What I'm going to do now is that click on that column, go to the transform tab, sorry, in the home tab, and I'll say, please keep the rows and keep the rows with errors. If I do that, I'm going to be left with only the columns and the values which contain the error. Now at the moment, if I load this query into Power BI or into Excel, this is not going to help the user to understand that what errors did you get? So I have to write a formula or a function or something in Power Query that expands on these errors and captures what these errors are so that these errors can be rectified. If I just go ahead and take a look at the custom column formula that I have done, let's just take a look. So here is the formula that I have written which is where I'm just using some try keyword. Let's just write this formula once again. So I'm just gonna maybe go ahead and I'm gonna say something like try and say, say something like value. What is value? Value is nothing but this particular column. I'm gonna click on okay and what I get is a record. If I peek into the record, what you're going to see is that the, every single record contains two different columns. It has an error column and it has the has error column and the error column. In case the error was found, this is going to be true and the details of the error are in the record column. Let's expand on this so that you will get more visual understanding. So if I just click right here and expand on this, both of these columns, click on OK and click on insert, this gets expanded. And if I maybe peek into the error column right here, that is where I can find what the error was. And you can see that here is where I can take a look at the reason of the error. I can take a look at the detail of the error, the message of the error, whatnot and whatnot. So let's just say that I want to give the user the reason as to why did you get the error. So from here, I have to get to here. And from here, I have to get to the reason of the error. And if you take a look at the transition that we have to make, it's going to be something like this. From the try statement that we have just written, we are going to get to the error column. From the error record right here, I'm going to get to the reason column. How do we do all of that kind of stuff? Please take a look. So I'm going to get rid of the expanded column right here. Delete that. I'm going to go back to the added custom step. And that is where I'm going to say that this little try and the value gives me a record. In the record, we just saw that we had a column called error. Let's just close the bracket and press enter. Let's just see what we get. 
Once I click on OK, I again get a record. But in that record, we have another column called reason, which is the value that I want to pull out. So I'm going to go back right here and I'm going to say, hey, from this, I would want to pull up another column called reason. And I can just close the square bracket and click on OK. And that is the reason of the error that why did you get the error? In case you do not really want to show the reason, you want to show the message of the error. You can also go ahead and maybe click on the message which is nothing but the column. And I can just say that instead of extracting the reason, I want to extract the message and that is the message extracted. Now, what I have been able to do, if I maybe go take a look at the preview of this particular error message, you're going to see that this is the exact message that I was able to take a look at only in the Power Query environment that I have been able to extract right here using this little trick right here. Okay, now good enough. I can just get rid of the errors itself, which is gone. And this is the table that I will load into my Excel, into my Power BI and give the user the experience of figuring out what the error was, how the errors can be resolved. And what do I have? I have the row number that contained the error. I have the column that contained the error and what exactly was the error. This is bananas. All right, that's been it. Let me know how did you find this one? Did you enjoy working with the techniques to resolve the errors in Power Query? And in case if you did, please do let me know which trick did you find the most interesting? Please comment below. If you have any questions, please comment below and I'll be glad to reply. In the end, I'd like to give again a big shout out about my DAX and my Power Query training courses. You're a beginner. You'd like to master the fundamentals, get on speed and start to solve hard problems of your own data. I'd highly encourage that you take a look at my courses. It's going to be super awesome. Thanks so much for sticking all around once again, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye now.